Hello guys, welcome to this tutorial series on AMV. My name is Derek Peng Yu and I am a hardware software engineer. AMV stands for Europe MasterCard and Visa. Those are the three companies that originally created the AMV technical standards based on ISO slash IEC 7816-4. Those are for contact cards and ISO IEC 14443 for the contactless cards. These are cards that we use in our everyday lives, even our SIM cards in the phone and so on. These standards are now managed by EMV Co. That is a consortium with control splits amongst those three companies and some additional companies like JCB, American Express, China Union Pay and Discover. In this episode, I will briefly explain how files and directories are structured in an EMV card. Next, I will briefly talk about naming conventions of files and folders. I will also talk about elementary files, which are the main files used for transaction between applications and external terminals. For example, a bank's ATM. The file and folder structures have the analogy of a tree. There is always a root folder called a master folder. It is the folder containing application dedicated folders and files. Each application dedicated folder contains files used for transaction for their respective application. Those files are called application elementary files. Application elementary files can also be stored directly in the master folder depending on their usage. So for example, an EMV card that supports three different applications will have three subfolders in the master folder. In this little example, the EMV card will support JCB, MasterCard, and the Visa application. It should also be noted that files and folders have the naming conventions which we shall see in the next slides. Here's another example, but this time it is for a SIM card. You can see here that there are two elementary files directly under the master folder. In this case, they are used for ICC, ID, and ELP respectively. The SIM card also has two applications, the GSM and the telecom application. Each application has its various elementary files used for different tasks in the application. Now that we know the basic file structure of an EMV card, you will ask yourself how can application really differ from one another? Of course, there are naming conventions on how files and folders should be named so that they can be identified uniquely by any external terminal communicating with those EMV cards. The naming convention of files and folders is what makes external terminals to be able to distinguish between applications and also interact with them. This simple diagram shows how each element within an EMV card is named. They are also identified according to those unique names or IDs. Let's go over to the naming convention and see how those names are encoded. A file ID is used to encode the master file. It is two bytes long and per default always 3F00. FFFF is also reserved for future use and cannot be used. There are also other FIDs which are reserved by ISO and other norms. The short file ID is used to encode names of elementary files. It is 5 bits long and therefore can only have values between 1 and 30. The elementary file with the ID 0 is always the actual selected elementary file. The short file ID is only used to implicitly select elementary files must not be given to each elementary file. A dedicated file name is also used as an application ID. It has a length between 1 to 16 bytes. It is made up of two main ISO data elements. A registered ID, which is 5 bytes long. It is always mandatory for each application. This is always provided by a national or international registry, so they are always unique. 
The other field is a proprietary application ID extension. It has a length between 0 and 11 bytes and optional for each application. This can be a serial or version number used to manage a particular application. Here are some examples of application IDs I took from Wikipedia. They are unique worldwide. You see, for example, the application ID for Visa. The first one is just five bytes long. It is completely made up of a registered ID. This first field. The second and the third are made up of registered ID and two byte proprietary ID extension. <clears throat> Let's talk about elementary files. They are the backbones of EMV cards. They are used for different subtasks to access logical structures within an application. Their contents are a series of basic encoding rules in the form of tag, length, and value. They encode data objects for either financial transaction or a template. These are elementary files between 1 to 10. Here is a table taken from the specification book one with the possible tags and templates they may occur in. I will make a video about the commands EMV cards understand and their possible responses with demos. This reference table will become clearer at that point. For now, just keep it by your side. It is the key. This is an example of a template called the file control information template. An EMV card will always respond with a file control information after a successful select command. We shall see that in the next video. It has four mandatory fields and other optional fields. There are other templates within the specification, but I'm going to explain this template with an example to make it easier to understand the others if you come across any. Here is a response example of an FCI template, that is a file control information template. It has the tag 6F. The length is 15 hex, and that is 21 bytes. If you count, you will notice that the last two bytes are not within the 21. So these last two bytes here, and not within the 21 bytes. The last two bytes are just status bytes, meaning successful in this case. We will also see that in the next video on commands and response. Most response have two bytes status bytes. Within the 21 bytes, the next tag in the template is the dedicated file name with tag 84 hex, so this one. See here from the template, the dedicated file name is the next in the following template. It has a length of 14, so the value is from 31. This is the length, 14. The value is from 31 to this 31. So if you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That is the value of the dedicated file name. If you translate that to ASCII, you will get the ASCII name of the dedicated file. The following mandatory tag is A5. And that is the FCI proprietary template with a length of 3. And that is 88. 1 and 1. So that is exactly how to decode a template. Jumping back to the elementary file content, I would like to show you an example of a response containing the records from an elementary file. 
as we saw in the previous slide, it has the tag 70. So this is the content of the elementary file. It always starts with the tag 70. And it has a length and then a series of tag with 61 and their length and values. So in this example, it has a length of 18 hex and that is 24 in decimal. So counting the 24 is the same thing as above. It ends here and the last two bytes are the status bytes. So the next tag is a 61 tag and that is this one. And going back to the table, 61 should be the application template. Here it is. It has a length of 16 hex, and that is 20 bytes. And the value contains a tag 4f. 4f should be the application dedicated file name. And the length is 5, and the following 5 bytes are the values. So here we see the ID of the application, A000000. So the following tag has an ID of 50. 50 should be the application level. and a length of 13 decimal, and the following 13 bytes are just the application level. And if you translate this into ASCII, you get the readable version, and it is just the EMV simulator. And the last two bytes are the status bytes, saying it's a successful command. 